what if there was a way that you can get better looking black and whites or at a minimum just have a little bit more control over the color representation in your black and white photos well you can and i'm going to show you exactly how to do that using on one photo raw let's go all right so here we are inside of on one photo raw and then just for situational awareness i did use brilliance ai and it made the photo look like this so here's the original and then here is what it looks like with the brilliance ai edits but those are the only edits that i've applied to this image besides black and white filter clearly does not have any edits and just so we're all understanding that we're working from the same starting point i'm just going to hit the little refresh button here and that resets it completely so if I wanted to, or the typical way of working with colors inside of black and white images using this tool is you would come down here to the conversion option and you can either use color response or channel mixer. Now the most popular is the color response just because it gives you a little bit more control over the colors, but as you're gonna find out, it's not going to give you the most control over your colors. So you can see if I, in fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit auto and you can see what it's doing to the image. If I turn it off, it's just barely impacting the colors in my photo. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how you can really gain control over the colors in your image. And some of you may have guessed it, we're just going to add a color enhancer. Now where you put the color enhancer matters because if I crank up on these reds on top of a black and white image, it's not gonna do anything for me, all right? What I wanna do, and you'll see how this instantly happens. I'm gonna crank up on the saturation and I'm gonna increase the brightness. As soon as I pull this underneath my black and white filter, watch what happens. The reds on the building, they get brighter. Now, when it comes to doing your conversions to black and white, you're not really working with saturation. So the saturation slider is going to be a little misleading as we kind of talk through this. However, it is going to give you some control that you don't have available to you in the black and white filter. And that's purely because you can change your hue and you can adjust kind of the volume of how much red is really there. Now, before we go any further, let me explain what's happening here. So that way you can really figure out how this will work in your own workflow and when you're editing photos, because that's kind of the goal of me teaching on this channel. So essentially what I'm telling on one to do is I want you to add color first, and then I want you to convert all of the color that I'm adding or enhancing or modifying, manipulating, whatever word you want to use. Then I want you to take all of that, what I just did with the color enhancer and map it over a monochromatic scale. So if I turn off both of these enhancers, you can see we're just back to that brilliant AI look. If I turn on the color enhancer, you're gonna see these reds get a little bit brighter because that's the adjustment that we made here in the red channel. And then when I turn on the black and white adjustment, well, everything goes black and white. So that's essentially what's happening. The reason why you wanna have this underneath your black and white, because if I put this on top, now you can see it made those areas darker. And as I pull up on the brightness slider, look at how that's impacting those areas in my image. This is one of the greatest ways to have control over how you manipulate your black and white filters. And you could get really creative and create a color enhancer for all, what is this, eight channels? Yeah, all eight of the color channels that the filter has available to you. And then you can mask as much as you want. We're not gonna do that today because that gets a little crazy, but then, once you have like a baseline color adjustment for your photo, then you can come over here to your black and white and you can hit auto if you so choose, or you can have just a little bit more control over what is happening with the reds. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So I'm on the reds and I'm just gonna increase them to 100% of brightness on the color enhancer. Now, when I come over here to my conversion, I can just push this up to 100% as well. Now watch what happens when I turn off the color enhancer. It's not as strong. 
So I get more control over my colors when I have this tool underneath my black and white adjustment filter, because I can only go to 100% on the black and white adjustment. And it's also not allowing me to tell on one what is actually red. See, with the hue slider, I can actually start to include more colors like yellows. If I want those to be more towards red, I can pull those towards red. And now those are getting impacted by this slider, as well as my magentas. I can pull those towards red. And now if I had magentas and oranges in this image, they're going to all start to get manipulated by the red slider, just like I was doing up here. All right. Now, obviously there are yellow and magenta sliders in here. So it definitely does make it a little bit difficult, but what you don't have in here, because you can see there's only six colors. I get access to two more colors down here. And I think that's aqua and purple. I don't think there's a purple. Yeah. Oh no, there is an aqua. So let's figure out real quick. Cause I never noticed green, yellow. I think it's orange actually. Yeah. So with the color response, all we get access to, or the, the two that we don't get access to are orange and purple. So if you need to move your colors so that way you can get the color response that you're looking for in your image, well, a color enhancer is going to be the way to go. And yeah, you could use the color adjustment as well. If you so choose, you can even use edit color. If you're doing something that's like really, really fine, pretty much any of the color adjustment tools are going to give you this flexibility, but the color enhancer, in my opinion, is hands down the most useful color modification tool inside of on one photo raw. All right. So now that we understand what's happening in the effect stack here, let's go ahead and use this in a practical sense. So I'm going to go ahead and reset my color enhancer. And let's say that this yellow sign is probably just a little too bright, but I want to, or better yet, I want to brighten the yellows that are in the back of the building. So if I turn this off, you can see there's like some yellow hues. This sign up here is going to be yellow as well. So let's go ahead and turn back on the black and white filter. We'll come back to our color enhancer and we're going to go to the yellow slider. I'm just going to go ahead and push up the brightness. Now, if you notice the text over here is getting bright, but this is also getting brighter as well. So if I turn it off, turn it back on, you can see what's happening. I don't really care for that. So the beauty, like I said earlier, you can mask these in is I can go ahead and click on the mask and I'm going to use a tool that I don't use all that often, which is the line mask tool. And I'm just going to outline this really crudely. You don't have to do it like me. You can use any of the masking tools because they all work the same when it comes to what I'm doing right here, right click. And I'm going to hit copy mask. And then I'm going to come back to the other color enhancer that I just added, right click, and then I'm going to paste the mask. Once that's on there, I'm going to right click the mask again and invert it. So essentially I have the opposite selection of what was on the previous filter. And then I can just pull down on the brightness here and you can see how that's impacting this particular triangle sign here. Well, the, the right lane ends sign. So if I turn it off, you can see it gets a little bit brighter. If I turn it back on, it gets a little bit darker and helps me kind of focus back into the image. Obviously my focus was here on this sign. So that's where the focus was on this particular shot. Now, the beauty of working in this manner is now that I have my colors kind of established, what I can do is really come back to the black and white and work with the color response to fine tune. So obviously I'm probably not going to mess with the yellows there because I just did all the work to make that sign look the way that I wanted it to. But maybe I want to mess with the magentas or maybe I want to darken down the blues because if I turn this off, you can see I have some blues in this wall over here and then I can go back and forth. I'm not going to do that in today's video, but I could go back down here to the color enhancer and start manipulating what I'm doing over there. But I'm not going to do that because the goal of today's video was really just to showcase what you could do. Now, let me make a snapshot of this and I'll show you a earlier look that I made with this one here using the exact same methods that I was just teaching 
and I have a few color enhancers and then I just added in a texture and then of course my favorite, the bleach bypass. So hopefully you found some value in today's content. If you did smash the like button and share this with a friend or someone who you think would find it valuable as well. If you wanna save some money when you shop over at On One or purchase On One Photo Raw, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. It'll save you some money when you check out and i do make a small commission and i greatly appreciate everyone who supports this channel in that way if you got questions about on one photo raw how this method could be used for your images let me know down in the comics below in the comics in the comments below and until the next time i want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating peace